What fruits are cousins to the long stem rose? Do you think I'm sexy with a shovel? No. This is season seven of Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Listen, laugh, and learn. Hi, I'm Nick. <laughs> and I'm Roy. <laughs> And we've scoured the internet again to find totally useless information just for you. Plus, once again, we'll answer your questions in our mailbag segment and some amazing feedback from our birthday messages and the headline from news from around the world. Woman sues man for standing her up on a date. Totally useless information. It's everything you never needed to know. Garden path with Nick and Roy. Mm. She lovely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ever since we got the marijuana card no. down here, I understand this now. We are, I really, we, I really do, man. We are talking about <laughs> plants and garden stuff, aren't we? Uh, how about some lunar soil? Ooh. Plants can grow in lunar soil. Scientists have been experimenting with soil that brought back from the moon decades ago on the Apollo missions and discovered that the lunar surface material, also called regolith, is capable of sustaining plant life. It's an exciting discovery for the future of space exploration, if they could ever get the rocket up there, but which could allow astronauts to grow their own food in space. You know, I I tell you, all we have to do, Nick, is go up there and seed it a little bit with some of our (laughs) poo-poo, and it'll be all fertilized, ready to go. And not for nothing, we'll let the Chinese go up there, because we can't seem to get a rocket off the ground. No, exactly. (laughs) And speaking of poo, let's talk to Ron Bloomer. Um, it's right. We'll send Ron Bloomer up there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Ron Bloomer was on one of our favorite episodes. It's like one of the one of the fan favorites of, of us talking about poop. Mm-hmm. If you haven't listened to that, what, we'll figure out what it is. It's it was season... season six, I think, episode nine. But in season six, and Funny. it was Ron Bloomer. He wrote uh, books about poop, and it's not they're not joke books. They're actually scientific, really fascinating no. read. Yeah, no bull poop. Yes. Okay, most of the flowers that we grow today have been so genetically modified for size and color mm-hmm. that they've all lost their smell. It doesn't seem like a big deal until you become a butterfly. Oh. Because you're not attracted to those flowers anymore because there is no more smell. And being that that's how they work, now butterflies are more attracted to weeds than flowers. Most butterflies are attracted to dandelions and clover, which are common weeds, rather than the flowers that they used to be attracted to. So yes, genetic modification. For all of this eco-friendly mambo jambo that I always make fun of, the tree-hugging hippies, Mm -hmm. this one I'll give them. (laughs) So when you said that the the butterflies are now into weeds, I'm like, they're walking around, they're going flower to flower going, yeah, man, this flower don't smell no more. Ever since the legalization, me and Nick are into weeds too. <laughs> That's right. We're in the weeds. Like we're on them right now. <laughs> well, you talk. Well, here's here's a flower that, or a plant or a flower, whatever it is, that does smell. It's lavender. Mm, I love lavender. Want to cure what ails your head quickly? And in our cases, we're not sure how long that'll take. Mm-hmm. But it could be yep. as simple as growing lavender in your kitchen. There is strong mm-hmm. evidence that delightfully scented herb. So it's a herb. There's my the answer to my question. It's a herb that can treat headaches and migraines. One study Mm -hmm. from 2013 found that people reported feeling less pain after inhaling the plant scent for only 15 minutes. Good old lavender. Yeah. Nick says herb. Right. Which is shocking to his uncle Herb. <laughs> so I'm in Toronto, Canada. Roy is in, in uh, Fort Myers, yeah, Florida. I tried to say that 10 times. <laughs> so I, I'm in Toronto. And um, in so it's funny because you used to say that. So, yeah, we do call it herbs. I mean, you could say herbs as well. In mm-hmm. Quebec, they don't pronounce the H. They pronounce it as H. Do you pronounce zero Z? No, it's zero. We do say oh, zero. Okay. But the letter Z in your language is Z to us. Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay, so you say Z for the letter Z, but in England, the zero is Z, oh. I believe. Or I think. In, I'm not sure. Maybe not, you're right. Maybe it's Z. And, uh, and in soccer, it's nil. Yeah. 
which is what's well, in our we'll have head. none of that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> okay, you want sweet tomatoes? Yes. I used to love that restaurant, Sweet Tomatoes. It went out of business after COVID. It was uh, a, too bad. it was all you could eat salad buffet. It was amazing. It was like 50, 60 feet long of salad buffet. It was awesome. Sounds exciting. Out of business now. Yeah. Uh, it was called the Soup Plantation Sweet Tomato. So you may have had them up there. I don't know. Well, no, no, okay. just spread some baking soda around the bottom of your tomato plant. Mm-hmm. Now, I spoke about this before, about the cracking of the tomatoes. But if you spread this, you will sweeten the tomatoes as well. It takes the acidity out of the soil so that the tomato never gets the acidity out of the soil and into the plant. So spread around a little baking soda underneath the plant, maybe a little bit of eggs, flour, and you'll have yourself a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why not? You know what? You know what that smells like? Useful what? information. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. That stank of useful information. I'm totally yeah, get useless. Get it off the show. <laughs> <laughs> totally useless information with Nick and Roy. Uh, spider plants. Now, air conditioners and furnaces are notorious for drying out the air, sapping the skin and body of much needed and protective moisture. One mm. study found that spider plants can humidify a room, especially when grown near a window with sunlight. Here's my teaser. What fruits are cousins to the long stem roses? And no, they're not some couple of guys from the village in New York. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the village people. <laughs> no, with their sweet tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy, oh, boy, here come the letters. Yes. <laughs> okay. Nickandroy.com. The question was, what fruits are cousins to the long stem rose? That's Get right. ready. Apples, pears, peaches, cherries, raspberries, and strawberries are all rosaceous or ros rosaceae plants, hmm. which are cousins to the rose. So a rose by any other name might be an apple, pear, peach, cherry, raspberry, or strawberry. <laughs> That's right. And because the butterflies don't smell them anymore, they can't even stop to smell the roses because they don't smell anymore. And I told the rose, never take the apple to the prom. That's it's your first cousin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> kissing, kissing apples. Oh, baby. <laughs> uh, what the heck is NPK? I... I don't know, and I'm I'm afraid I'm going to find out. Well, <laughs> well, that's why we appear every week, don't we? To listen, <laughs> laugh, and learn. NPK? NPK. N as in Nancy, PK. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is an acronym for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Let's Ooh. take the guesswork out of fertilizing. The NPK is the ratio and what those numbers on the fertilizers mean. Oh, good one, Nick. Right. I use 666 for all of my plants around the house. Or they have 10, 10, 10, 666. So there you go. Yes, I didn't think that K, because that threw me off. That's right, because N for nitrogen, P for phosphorus. And then, of course, it's the periodic table symbol for potassium, which is K. Now, I guess they didn't want to call it NPP. Yeah, because well, that's OK, which is uh, okra and uh, potassium. <laughs> no, but then if it was NPP, they think, but you have to pee on your whatever to fertilize it. No, that's yes, not what. The that's old why. NPP, that's which right. is the no place to pee pee. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like in one's pool. We spoke on the show, you know, Nick, that vanilla beans come from orchids. Yes. And I think a lot of people know that. So that's not some big shocking fact. And if you didn't, well, hell, that's why you're listening to the show, because you don't know anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just join up with me and Nick, because we're idiots. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not idiots. We're useless. You know, Nick, they thought that I was talking about them. But in reality, I was just projecting it onto them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Vanilla beans come from orchids. But did you know? that there are orchids that smell like other things. And they were made, of course, genetically to smell like other things other than vanilla. Right. So sherry babies, the sherry baby strain of orchids smells like chocolate. Ah. And the golden elf 
smells like lemon. Oh. Yeah. And there's another one called the Philopolis Valacia, which sounds dirty to me. It does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to play with my Philopolis. <laughs> that, the Philopolis, whatever, smells like cinnamon. Nice. So you mix you mix all these orchids together, you got yourself like a dessert or something. Well, it is. I mean, I was just getting hungry thinking, you know, we, we've gone through a mall where you can't help but smell that distinctive aroma of Cinnabons. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the golden elf playing with his old Falapas <laughs> It is. <laughs> Speaking of which, what a great segue. You're listening to Totally Useless Information <laughs> with Nick and Roy. You can uh, check out our website, nickandroy.com. We made it simple for you because we couldn't figure it out. Nickandroy.com. <laughs> you can, we have a whole bunch of stuff you can do on there. Lots of fun. You can check out uh, last week's episode. Right. We're not electronically challenged. We're just stupid. <laughs> no, useless. We're useless. <laughs> you can check out uh, our previous episodes from season six. And of course, we have uh, the episode with Leanne Phillipson, our favorite nutritionist. And of course, ah, Berto yeah, from Man Made cool. Brand. We have all kinds of great stuff. So check it out. NickandRoy.com. Yeah, I love that we're bringing a bunch of guests on. We're getting some fantastic guests, too. Yeah. So yeah. that's really great. And the feedback on, on um, our email is just amazing. And 65 countries. Thank you, folks. Thank you so much. Go to nickandroy.com, and there's the birthday message on there, which is what you really, if you want a gift for somebody that's just awesome, don't take our word for it. Go to nickandroy.com. Go on the top. You'll see on the, the bar up top, it says birthday. Hit on birthday. You can hear a sample message. It is an awesome gift that you can get for somebody that has everything. You'll love it. I have some samples of some feedback actually from people who have ordered the birthday message and they've told us what they heard. They gave us their feedback when they first heard the message. Cause I always, whoever orders the message, I like to send them a copy of it ahead of time. And then they, we get the feedback after the person, the guest of honor has heard it. So some yeah. testimonials coming right up on totally useless information with Nick and Roy. So let's get to music from Beethoven to Bieber. Rock and roll to rhythm and blues. This is totally useless music information with Nick and Roy. You've heard of the rapper Eminem? Yes. Yes. And he had a movie which was really good. It's actually a really good movie. He's the real Slim Shady. That's what ah. he nicknamed himself. Yes. He sold <laughs> millions and millions of albums, not to mention videotapes and so on and, and movies. Yes. But his first album came out in 1996. It was called Infinite. Oh. Most people don't know this because it only sold 1,000 copies. Oh. That is a complete and utter disaster. It was probably his friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's 1,000 copies. If, you, if he had a show and 1,000 people showed up, he'd be mad. Right? So, yeah. But anyway, if you have a copy of uh, Eminem's first album, Infinite, it is worth anywhere between $200 to $1,000 now because it was so limited. And of course, they re they re sent it out again. They remastered it or whatever they did. Yeah. But yeah. the original album, 1996, was a total disaster, and they probably figured he wasn't going anywhere. His name, by the way, is Marshall Bruce Mathers III. Right, Marshall Mathers. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's the Eminem stands for. I think you would use that, right? Marshall Mathers. Yeah. It sounds like matters, you know, like he matters like a little yeah, bit. He's a rap singer. Some people think consider yeah. rap music with a C that's silent. Eminem's kind of cool because it's spelled E M I N E M. So which isn't really M N M like the candy. Yeah. It's pretty pretty catchy. Pretty so uh, a bunch of years ago, I emceed an event. I'll give you an aside here. So I emceed an event to raise money for our local sick kids hospital. It was a, um, a real estate company actually, and so uh, I was the MC and uh, we had the real estate agents uh, do lip sync. Did they use you to try to make the kids sick? No, or? no, no. They didn't. <laughs> There's no cure. So <laughs> that's right. They make the kids sick and then they give. Yeah, they raise lots of money for the hospital. It's He's like a, the guy who starts the fire and then calls the fire. Exactly. Department. No, no, no. Nothing like that at all. Actually, we have an ex hero. <laughs> we have a world renowned uh, sick kids hospital here in Toronto. So um, to a fundraiser for the hospital and each of the real estate agents came up with an idea to do a lip sync. So one of the real estate agents wanted to be Eminem. He went out and he rented an Eminem costume. 
like okay. the candy. And he put some bling around them. And he performed a couple of Eminem songs. And then the, after the performance was done, I asked the people on the front row because he wasn't wearing underpants. I said, was it plain or peanut? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was, well, was something it, holding his nuts that's there. That's uh, right, exactly. In, in yeah, and it melted in their hands. Uh, <laughs> here's my teaser. Uh, what I what was my teaser? My teaser was: uh, Do you think I'm sexy with a shovel? Roderick David Stewart was born on January 10th, 1945, in London, England. Born mm. into a working class family, Stewart excelled at soccer. He worked a series of odd jobs, including a grave digger. Before his singing career took off, Rod Stewart. Oh, wow. He was a grave digger. It was one of the many odd jobs that he had before his singing career shot up into the stratosphere. You know, he was the lead singer of the Jeff Beck band. That's right. And he quit because he didn't want to go to Woodstock. Yep. Yeah. That's, yeah. Most people don't know that. He exactly. was the singer. Yeah. And the Jeff Beck band. So he got to start. Hans Zimmer. This name sounds German. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, as it is customary here on the show, whenever someone is from Germany, can have a few bars of the German national anthem, please. Deutschland, Deutschland, Eber. Let's talk about Hans Zimmer. Okay. <laughs> Where are your papers, Hans? No, okay. Hans Zimmer uh -huh. is a guy who wrote a lot of musical scores. Lion King, which oh. is amazing score. Yeah. Um gladiator another amazing movie score and the pirates of the caribbean series all of the music scores for them this guy writes these amazing orchestrated scores no formal background in music really oh he wow. took a couple of lessons when he was a little kid on the piano and quit he had no formal training at all. And this guy is one of the best um, composers of, of movie theme music. But th that's the composers of our time, you know? Yeah. You got Williams doing Star Wars and all those things. You know, I mean, so epic, crazy, epic. right? Yeah. Hans Zimmer. Look him up. He's great. I believe that it, 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 when those big epic movies, the music and the soundtrack is so important. I mean, you know, the horror films, of course, have that dramatic music and, you know, they make your blood pressure go up and everything like that. But yeah. any of these epics like John Williams and even Hans Zimmer, the really yeah, epic. Yeah. It's the music that really makes um, makes, I think, part of the movie. Well, Hans Zimmer went into the music for movies. His cousin went into the lighting of movies and his name is Franz Dimmer. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He wasn't as bright as Hans. <laughs> wow. Very funny, Dick. That was pretty good. There you go. Um, so uh, we've all... Okay, I, I'm assuming this. Uh, I'm assuming that you've heard of the... You're going to assume, folks. Get <laughs> That's ready. Right. <laughs> That's right. What well, of my biscuit. <laughs> yeah. That was from last uh, couple of episodes ago. So listen. Oh, my God. Um, so yes, I'm going to assume, and yes, I know, if you never assume because you make an ass out of you and me. That's right. why you're listening to totally useless information with me. <laughs> right. So Shazam is an app that you use on your device that it, it listens to a few seconds of a song, and it will identify what song it is and the artist of course and then of course it, it shows up with a link for you to purchase except, except if nick is singing and then it's <laughs> yeah <laughs> then a like, warning I, comes out and then keep saying what <laughs> what <laughs> can't find this <laughs> can't find this and yeah there's an old man there ah, i can't find it and then it says dad. don't do it again <laughs> <laughs> was that britney spears no that wasn't it no anyway the most shazammed artist Okay, Ooh, so Shazam have, has come up with a list. This is good. This yeah. is good. I want to know this now. So to celebrate their 20th anniversary, Shazam released a list of major moments from the past couple of decades have been around. And among the notable stats is one crowning Drizzy, also known as Drake. Fellow, it's a Drake song. Fellow Canadian. Okay. Drake is the most shazam artist of all time with 350 million Shazams. Across his Drake. solo songs and tracks he's been featured on as well. I wish his cousin Mandrake would make him yeah. disappear. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like Go the Drake? 
Hey, here's a Seinfeld I episode. Know. A Seinfeld yeah. reference. You don't like to? I love the Drake. You know what? Yeah. Uh, I am not a fan of of his music. Um, although that you know he's a, a prominent uh, artist here, and he is from the city of Toronto, which is where I reside. Oh, so, there yeah. you go. So Double you like him. Heavy metal. Yes. Originated in the United States. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's a genre of music. I mean, that's a huge, huge genre of music. But most people don't know this. In Finland, they really love heavy metal. In fact, they have 53.5 bands for every 100,000 people in Finland. Oh. Do you know how staggering that number is? They're so into hard rock. It's like their number one thing. Also, Sweden, Norway, and Iceland are right behind them as some of the biggest headbanging countries in the world. That's interesting. Fascinating. Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Iceland. All hard rock. Crazy. Didn't know that. You would think that uh, a country like Sweden, where they had ABBA, you know, yeah, they weren't heavy yeah. metal. That's right. Well, if you change your mind, that's right. <laughs> Take a chance on me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Nick and Roy. Recite. I knew you'd get it. Nick. That's right. I just, knew. <laughs> you know what? Nick and Roy recite the lyrics from the 1970s. I know. So all of a sudden, like this voice in the background, it's Shazam. That's right. Going, stop it. Just stop You're it. Going, Take a chance, take a chin, chin, chin. <laughs> Eric Clapton has been inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame three times. Really? Oh, Yardbirds? Two with right? bands, one as a solo artist. Right. Eric Clapton is a consistent hit maker, one of the greatest guitarists of all times. Perhaps that's why he's the only person to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame three times. I know it's the Yardbirds, and I I know it's another band that he was with. Uh, what's his name from Led Zeppelin? So, yeah, yeah. Here's one for you fans out there. Yes, the Beatles. What about the them? largest about band in musical history? In 2018, Paul McCartney finally admitted something that they never admitted before, which is not one of the Fab Four could read or write music. Really? They were never formally trained and played by ear. Wow. So when they came up with something, they just went in the studio and said, hey, and and to be honest with you, I've never taken a lesson on an instrument. I play guitar, I play piano, always by ear. And that's what I would do. I go in the studio with this guy, John. Rankin and I'd say, Johnny, listen to this. But and John had musical training and he could write music, but he would follow along by what I was playing, the chords I was playing or whatever. And I don't even know what the chords were. He would say, oh, it's a G, it's a F flat. It's a, and I'd be like, yeah, whatever. It's all sure. Greek to me. Yeah. Yeah. F you this. Know. Right. Uh, yeah. Let's go back to Eric Clapton for a minute because one of our producers uh, sent us a oh, note why? saying. You don't like me anymore? <laughs> no, no. I, no, I do, of course. Uh, so he's part of the Yardbirds. Cream, mm-hmm. I think, is the other band. Cream, cream. cream. That was yeah, the name I couldn't think of. Cream. There you go. So thank you That's to one right. of our I producers. like cream, too. I like it on my desserts. I do. <laughs> exactly. You know, I've been known to, uh, but whatever. Okay. Let's go now, on, speaking man. of accomplishments, <laughs> as we move on uh, swiftly. Uh, Double Diamond Certified Albums, the Recording Mm -hmm. Industry Association of America, or RIAA, has given Mm -hmm. out a number of diamond certifications to various albums that have sold at least 10 million units. There are only five rock bands that have more than one diamond certified studio albums. Van Halen, Mm -hmm. Def Leppard, Pink Floyd... Pink Floyd, I would understand. Def Leppard, but go ahead. Led Zeppelin and that. the Beatles. Yeah, I would figure the Beatles. I thought the Rolling Stones. Well, maybe they're not double diamond. But over De- Def Leppard? Yeah, well. Def Leppard. See how hard rock? It's yeah, just, exactly. It's hard. It really is. Um, it is. Yeah. It's hard to take, Nick. It's no, just hard. We thank you very <laughs> much for listening. I knew a few girls in high school. We that thank said you that. very much for <laughs> listening to Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Week after week, we are on the iHeartRadio Talk Network. We are on News Talk 1010 in Toronto. C- We're all over the place. CFRA in Ottawa. CJ. Like dog poop. CJAT. <laughs> 
Okay. CJAD in Montreal, CJBK in London, CKTB in St. Catharines, CKLW in Windsor, AM 1150 in Kelowna, BC, and CFAX in Victoria, BC. So we are and coast to L and coast. L-N-M-O-P. Yes. <laughs> coast to coast in Canada. We're also uh, in 65 different countries. Now, let, speaking of CFAX, just one one note before we go on to our next topic. You're gonna go on. You're going we, on here, yeah, Nicole. <laughs> which is history. So this oh, yes. this came to us from a listener from CFAX in Victoria. Hi, Nick and Roy. You guys are hilarious. I live in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. I listen late at night to you on CFAX 1170 when insomnia strikes me. Now I've heard mm-hmm. that before. That people say when they can't sleep, they listen to us. What's his name? Uh, hold on. Her name is Mar- Mary Louise Arrow. Oh, her, her name. Her name is okay, Mary right. Louise Arrow. Hi, Mary. Now, she says, Roy's laugh is quite unique. Ha ha. Mm. Cheers and keep on entertaining the masses. Now, Where is this woman? Where is she? She, she is. Well, she's not here. She's in Victoria, <laughs> B.C. So <laughs> she, 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 le- no, no, no. she actually left us a voice message. That you can do on our website, nickandroy.com. And she said, who has that infectious laugh? And I said, that's, I responded to her and I said, that's Roy. It is an infectious laugh and there's no vaccine for it. Exactly. It's like COVID. (laughs) That's right. Exactly. So thank you very much. Could be deadly. (laughs) Thank you very much for, uh, for your uh, response. Mary Louise Arrow from British Columbia. She has such good taste. She does. You're listening to Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Today's history. What happens tomorrow is history. Yeah. Catherine the Great. Yeah. Ca- yeah. yeah. Uh, Catherine the Great. You know what yes. she was famous for? I don't know, but she was great. <laughs> She's a goat. Catherine. She's a goat. No, she was a fox. Uh, Catherine. <laughs> Catherine, Catherine. She's an animal. She was an animal. <laughs> Catherine, Catherine the Great. The second, called Catherine the Great, reigned over Russia for 34 years, longer than any other female in Russian history. As Empress, Catherine westernized Russia. She led her country into full participation in the political and cultural life of Europe. Mm. So maybe and then some they people, killed her. Well, <laughs> replaced her with vodka. <laughs> That's right. So maybe she They're was doing a fine job, aren't they? The yeah, Russians. They are. So even though they called her the great, but she definitely westernized Russia. And some people yeah. thought it was a good thing. Other people had different ideas. Yeah. Now we got Putin. The whatever yeah mm-hmm. we're well, ready guys let's uh, get back to- <laughs> that's right you ready so cushion butsu what you heard me <laughs> well, i did but i don't know what it means i heard you but i didn't so cushion butsu okay what about it it's freaky right yeah between the 11th century and the 19th century buddhist monks would slowly over the course of three years starve themselves of food and water after three years they would successfully mummify their own bodies while they were alive oh so cushion but soon that's right see now see now that you've explained it i understand what you meant there you go see it was just a sin but they would actually mummify their own bodies Ugh. these buddhist monks oh, crazy well. and they did it for between the 11th and the 19th century so they did it a lot I guess they were so cheap they didn't want to spend on burials. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, there's that's... Uncle Butsu. He's in the corner. <laughs> that's right, Uncle Butsu. Now let's go He's back. Got his hand out so he can hold a tray. <laughs> now Catherine the Great. Maybe this is why she was great. Let's go back to Catherine the Great for a moment. Oh, back to Catherine. Being Catherine the Great's lover came with huge rewards. Mm-hmm. You bet it did. Catherine was famous. <laughs> yeah. So I love this line. Catherine was so famously loyal to her lovers. Okay, so how could you be loyal to your lovers, plural, right? Like no, okay. crazy. But she was. Right. Both during their relationship and even after it ended. Always parting on good terms, she bestowed upon them titles, palaces, <laughs> land, and even people. Oh, even people. Gifting one former lover... More yeah. than 1,000 serfs or indentured servants. 
Oh, that's always nice, too. You know, I like you a lot, so I sent you a few slaves. That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, Catherine. Taking the title away, it's Catherine the Ugly. <laughs> but <laughs> perhaps know? nobody reaped the bounties of her favor more than Stanislaw Poniatowski, one Ooh. of her earliest lovers and father of one. Stanislaw Poniatowski. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was one of her earliest lovers and the father of one of her children. Oh, only one. That's right. So, but he was he was probably her favorite lover for a reason. Why? The old they called him the old pole. <laughs> <laughs> Stanislaw Politowski. <laughs> I like cigars. Yes. Maybe not as much as Bill Clinton, but I like cigars, Nick. <laughs> of course. You like smoking cigars? Do you ever smoke? Cigars? No, I I tried once, but uh, no, it did not. Uh, it didn't go well. So no, I don't. Smoke well, you don't cigars. sit on them, Nick. You smoke them. Oh, <laughs> so it didn't okay. Sit Maybe well that's... with you, but you, know, I mean, you don't put them in your back pocket lit. Well, anyway, I do like cigars. I don't smoke them that much. I do have a bunch of good ones. Okay. Winston Churchill. He really liked cigars. In fact, he liked them so much, he smoked fifth. 15 cigars a day how i and now mind you the cigar that's named after him which is called the churchill mm -hmm. is the longest big cigar very reminiscent of slanistor poliski <laughs> <laughs> yes how do you like that catherine <laughs> by the way just that's great catherine had two children Two children. Yeah, and Stanislaw was the father of one of them. One of them. That's yes. right. So anyway, Winston Churchill, 15 cigars a day. These Churchill cigars can't figure out how he would even smoke them. He had to be puffing on them constantly because they would go out. I don't think I could smoke three cigars, four cigars in a day. That's just a lot of cigars. Sure. Fifteen. Yeah. He said, never, never, <laughs> never put a cigar down. That's right. <laughs> in ancient Asia, death by elephant was a popular form of execution. Yeah. Yeah. I was crushed when I read this. <laughs> well, <laughs> funny you should say that. Not funny, but uh, it, you know, it isn't funny at all. This could be taught by slowly breaking bones, crush skulls, twist off limbs, or even execute people using large blades fitting to their tusks. Now, from time to time, Nick and I get the same facts. I didn't write this one down, oh, but please. I read it. I did read this fact in, in, a, in a thing in a, in a, a, on a site that I was combing around, and Scott. it said they taught the elephants how to do it, like how to twist their feet to crush the bones. Yeah. So it was slow. So it was like a slow, horrible death. You talk about elephant in the room. And the thing that really stinks is the poor elephants, because they remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the person that I crushed their skull three years ago. I know their name and everything. I just put it in the trunk. Oh, my God. Yes. Roman Emperor Caligula. Yes. Twisted, crazy lunatic. Allegedly. But he loved animals, so he's a good guy. <laughs> they say that about Hitler. Yeah. Really? He loved dogs. Really? <laughs> really, I don't think that counts. Okay. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but he's not all bad there, Caligula. He loves animals. He loved his horse. His horse was named Insidious. And I think we spoke about this on a show in, like, season one. Yeah, way back Where Caligula... Way made his horse a senator. Yes, that's correct. Okay, but there's more to this story that I didn't know. First off, he was a sex-crazed lunatic, Caligula, so God only knows what he did with yeah, Insidious. Maybe he was once with, uh, with Catherine the Great. Who knows? It's exactly, <laughs> and that's why she was like, can you name me Catherine Insidious? <laughs> <laughs> that's Insidious. Whoa, I love this horse. <laughs> Whoa, Insidious. That's right. Oh, okay, but anyway... Mm. He built homes for this horse. Really? Bestowed land on this horse. He built one house that had marble stalls, bejeweled collars, and, and literally ivory mangers. Okay? Now, think about that. 
marble stalls, mm-hmm. bejeweled collars. Yeah. Sounds like the Kardashians' house. <laughs> <laughs> It sure does. Wow. No, but can you imagine this guy was that sick? This guy was a sick, depraved lunatic. He was. And while his people starved. And he was out doing Catherine. <laughs> insidious. And you... Tending insidious over there. That's right. Insidious, if you ask I'm going to go take a ride, so to speak. Now, you mentioned Hitler before. Adolf Hitler's nephew fought against mm-hmm. the Nazis in World War II. Did he? I did not know this. During the Second World War, William Patrick Hitler, who later became William Patrick Stewart Houston, I don't know why he has a hyphenated name, but what the heck. I think I, I would figure why he wanted to change it. He was know? drafted in the United States. Oh, cousin Adolf. <laughs> Not well, exactly a role model. No, it isn't. <laughs> well, William Patrick Stewart Houston was drafted into the U.S. Navy. He ah. was wounded in action and was awarded the Purple Heart and went on to gain American citizenship. Okay, so I want to clarify something for you because I my mother's side was German, and so my grandparents were both German. Okay. And my grandfather wanted to fight in World War II for the American side, of course, because he lived in, in the United States. And so he ch- he signed up for the Navy. And the reason why most of the Germans signed up for the Navy was so that they could fight in the Pacific rather than fight in Europe against the Germans. Again, maybe not, you know, because my grandfather could maybe shoot his own brother, so he didn't want to do that. So okay. he signed up to fight in the Pacific. So a lot of Germans did that, just to clarify that, American Germans. So, uh, yeah, so imagine that mm-hmm. they an a, a hitler became a u.s citizen my god yeah a hitler was a u.s citizen can you imagine that yeah i can't and then adolf went over to Catherine and said what do you think of this <laughs> being a schnitzel <laughs> you're listening to totally useless information with nick and roy wait a minute i got one more that's why i just wanted to tell, remind people what you're listening to <laughs> in case they had any doubts whatsoever the sound made from krakatoa and no i'm not talking about nick relieving gas <laughs> Wow. The sound made from Krakatoa. Yes. The volcanic eruption in 1883, Nick knows because he was there, mm-hmm. <laughs> was so loud that it ruptured eardrums 40 miles away. Wow. Yes. Now, here's a fact that I did not know. I've heard that before that it ruptured eardrums 40 miles away, but we keep building, folks. If we say something maybe four or five years ago, we may build on it. Well, get ready. It traveled around the world four times. The sound was so loud that it couldn't stop. So it went around the world four times before it ceased. And it could be heard from 3,000 miles away. So, for instance, that's like me yelling, hey, Nick, from California, and you saying, what, Roy, from Toronto? Wow crazy like we're talking right next to each other that's how loud it was well it's just like zoom i guess um which is wh- how we communicate <laughs> if you go to nickandroy.com slash birthdays or you go at the top and you click on birthdays so as we said earlier t- on the show you go yeah. there it is a unique and personalized birthday gift we provide totally useless information about the day that the person was born, the guest of honor. Here are some testimonials. OMG, I absolutely love it, she said. Thank you so much. This is so much more than I expected, and you really put a lot of thought and effort into it. I was afraid it would be mostly made up of random useless information. No, that's just our regular show. (laughs) But you masterfully personalized it. Thank you we again. We do. Every single one, folks. Thank you again for making my day, and we're sure that will make Rob's birthday extremely special. Right. When we go, when when we get the, when you go on nickandroy.com and you click birthdays, mm-hmm. you'll hear, hear a sample, but it'll also, you, you'll answer some questions that gets us the ability to literally make each one personalized. Exactly. Not some boilerplate template thing like our show we never know what the hell is going to go exactly. on exactly <laughs> we don't even know and we do it now here's here's the follow-up email that we got after the guest of honor got it hey guys just to let you know that rob's surprise party was last night and he let us know that he loved your birthday greeting thanks wow. again for all the great work you have a truly awesome birthday gift for anyone to enjoy Signed, Donna and Dennis. So thank you, Donna and Dennis. It is our pleasure to provide a smile on people's faces. It's reasonably priced. Go to nickandroy.com slash birthdays. So the other thing that you can do while you're on the website, you leave us an email. How do you do that? You go to nickandroy.com 
and click on Contact Us. What's in the mailbag? What's in the mail? You can even leave a voice message now. We're in like the 21st century, me and Nick. That's right. You, you recorded on the rest of the world. Yeah, we have a Victrola app on our website. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. We, we actually crank up the old Victrola. And <laughs> Howard K. Howard K. did not tell us where he's from. Oh, OK. And so so I, I, and I said, who's Howard K. He just wrote Howard K. But then he writes, thanks, guys, for making my wife's birthday so special. And this is like crazy because this month I think we had like 25 things about the birthday thing. She was so surprised, he says. She just kept playing it to friends and family and crying. Now, yes, that has happened to Nick and I many times when we speak to women. They <laughs> usually break out in tears. Yes. That's usually on the phone. When they get to see us, they begin to sob. <laughs> this whining noises, like yeah. almost a funeral. <laughs> so, yeah. Wailing. They call it wailing. Wailing. Yeah. I wanted to say to Howard Kate, thank you so much. We're, we're getting a lot of these messages, and we try to address everybody, and I don't think we got back to Howard because of the way he wrote the email. So, Howard K., awesome man. Glad your wife enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much, wherever you're from. Maybe he's part of the Witness Protection Program. He doesn't want to <laughs> He's in hiding. Okay. Stands for uh, killer, killer. <laughs> <that's right. laughs> and from Crystal Beach, Ontario writes, Dear Nick and Roy, although I am having an amazing summer, I guess she wrote this in the summer, fall and mm -hmm. winter will soon be upon us. This is why I am starting to listen to all of your previous episodes so I can catch up with all of And what is her name, Nick? Anne from Crystal Beach. I'm, I'm glad Anne is allowing the seasons to progress, but That's go ahead. Right. <laughs> she liked to catch up with all of your episodes by Winterfall. She must be a gamer. I like them with mustard, too. That's right. <laughs> Thanks. A loyal listener, Anne from Crystal Beach. Here's my question. Where did the term tickety-boo come from? Tickety-boo. 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 Yeah. Anne, I love you. Awesome. It's tickety-boo. Tickety it tickety sounds like Yardbird. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. sounds like tickety boo uh, that you wrote us chiefly yeah. and originated as British slang, possibly from an Indo Aryan language, meaning it's all right, sir. The phrase, the phrase could have been picked up by British personnel in India before independence and spread in modified form to the United Kingdom and elsewhere in the Commonwealth. Tickety boo is all right, sir. Oh, my God. That's a good one. Thank and you, thank man. you for sending that in. See, folks, write in. Give us these crazy things. I love this. The tickety-boo. It's tickety-boo. And now for something completely useless. Joan of Arc was 17 years old when she convinced King Charles, not the new King Charles, right? <laughs> <laughs> King Charles VI, to let her lead his armies to victory. Now think about this. The 17 year old girl goes over to the King and says, listen, I had this premonition that I'm going to lead your troops to victory. He believed her so much that he put her in charge. I wow. mean, it's crazy, but she did. And she wins. No, oh. <laughs> she survives the war. She survives a 60 foot leap from a tower that she was imprisoned in and threw herself out of and then got away. Okay. Then she was falsely accused and then convicted by trial of heresy and was burned at the stake. She was age 19 when she was burned at the stake. Oh. All of this stuff happened in two years. In like a 19-month period of time, she did all of this stuff. She was busy. That is amazing she was a very very busy gal very busy gal she was over yes yeah, and what busy. was the english saying toodaloo tickety boo Tiddly. she was tickety -boo. Tiddly winks <laughs> no tickety boo she but she was the first person who maybe she invented multitasking there she goes yeah tickety boo that's right uh what is do you it, got? then she said is it hot in here is it hot in here or is it just me <laughs> it's like dark. It's too dark. I'll take the steak. <laughs> yeah, right. Here's my useless fact: the word with the most meanings, the word in the mo with the most meanings in the English language is the verb set. S e t. Wow. With 430 senses listed in the second edition of the Oxford English Dictionary. Well, uh, yeah, you could play a set of tennis. You could set tile. You could set people straight. Wow. 
the word commands the longest entry in the dictionary at 60,000 words or 326,000 characters. The okay, you know what, set. folks? You, you, you listen to this show and you wonder where we come up with this stuff. And sometimes we do as well, so That's don't right, feel yeah. bad. Yeah, exactly. But this show has some really cool stuff. That's right. Tickety-boo. So, Tickety-boo. <laughs> hey, this week on the show, we talked about garden, we talked about music, and we talked about a little bit of history. It's time for the news. Oh, no! From around the corner and around the world, this is T-U-I News. After getting stood up, she finally got her date in court. Wow. A Michigan woman is raising eyebrows online after suing a man for $10,000, wait for it, for standing her up on a date. So the guy never showed... So now she's suing him for ten. She's fig- figured she couldn't raise him up, so she'll raise some eyebrows. That's right. <laughs> the woman <laughs> named Kashan. The, the old tiddly boo. <laughs> no, it, no, it wasn't tickety boo at all. It was not all right at all. The woman named Kashante. <laughs> Her name was Kashante Short. Kashante Short. Kashante Short had reportedly filed mm-hmm. the lawsuit. This is back in 2020. This is how far, how far back this goes. In which she alleged. This is Florida? Is this in Florida? No, this is a Michigan woman. Michigan. Yeah. Okay. The guilty conscience, do you? Uh, no, 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 no. Just figured they're all loonies here. But okay. <laughs> so back in 2020, she alleged that Richard Jordan did not show and left her on her mother's birthday, and her mom had just passed away. Oh, no, no. She sued. She just passed away, meaning she was dead there in the room? <laughs> no. no. She did no not show, show and left on like, her what the hell is that smell? I'm not going in there. <laughs> no, that's why. She sued the accused date ditcher for intentional infliction of emotional distress on the grounds so, that Jordan... Can I stop you? Can yeah. I stop you for one second? Sure you can. She is suing Mr. Jordan. Right. Dick Jordan. Richard Jordan. Dick... Dick Jordan is right. being sued by Shante or whatever. Kashante Kush- Short. Kashante. Right. Because Kashante got stood up by Dick. Yes. Now, had you known that you could sue somebody for standing you up, Nick, you would have been embroiled in hundreds of legal suits yeah. during high school. <laughs> or embroidered. <laughs> She sued the accused, I love this alliteration, she accused the date ditcher for intentional infliction of emotional distress on the grounds that Jordan had deliberately hurt her by standing her up. After some back and forth between Short and the judge, the defendant, Jordan, weighed in saying, to be honest with you, sir, I thought this case was just going to be thrown out. We had yeah. a date, one date, and nothing else after that. Now I'm being sued for ten thousand dollars. He says ten grand. She wants. I don't see how this is going to go any further. I think this is a waste of your time, according to Dick. Could you see the the the, the um, judge going? Okay, Dick. Short. Short. Right. Dick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Dick short wedding. It's a short. <laughs> dick. It's the short Dick wedding. However, short when claimed that the man had perjured himself by allegedly lying about leaving her in the lurch, a Ooh. point the judge said she was in no position to determine. So accused stand-up guy Jordan deemed to be the case just a waste of time. In yeah. that letter, he lied, and that's what brought forth the perjury. It was never perjury in the beginning. It was perjury after his response. So this is getting really complicated. Yeah, right, because he was an idiot for writing her a letter. So he now, should have never said anything. He should have said, I'll write you a letter, and then never ne- never wrote a one and stood her up again. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wouldn't put a stamp on the letter, right? So this yeah, takes exactly. forever. I, I do it, right? Now, the judge was growing really impatient here, and he said, you can't mm-hmm. add another count because you don't like or disagree what his answer was. So yeah, she the didn't judge like- said, we're going to take a, a small break, and then he never came back and stood her up, too. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. <laughs> So fed up with the plaintiff, his honor asked Short if, she, if he asked her if she understands what perjury is. Yes, I understand perjury is a lie. I know what perjury means. No, perjury is a false statement made under oath, according to the reporter. Exactly. A lie is a lie. Perjury is a false statement made under oath. Right. She's the idiot. But go ahead. So after protracted debate over legal semantics. So this started out as like suing this guy, suing Dick. For not showing up on a he date. gave a 50 cents and a McDonald's coupon. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so then she goes to the judge. Are we all done here? She finally agrees to transfer the case. Ooh, to He said ticky boo. <laughs> no, it is a ticky boo. She says, I'm going to transfer this case to district court in line with uh -oh. the judge's original recommendation. Wow. Ma'am. So he, he, he brought it to another court. So then she, the judge says, ma'am, what about the costs associated with appearing because you filed in the wrong court? Right. So now she's got to pay up. So now she she's says, the filer. this was her quote. Um, I need to see because I was not aware since you said perjury was not on there. I was not aware that the criminal offense was intentional infliction. Therefore, I was short sighted. Ooh. That was pretty smart of her to back out that way. Nor was even smarter on Dick Jordan from not going on with the date. Exactly, because she backed out of the trial, he backed out of the date. That's right. There you go. We got a lot of backing up here. And neither one got dick. And, so. the, ju <laughs> and the judge. The judge got dick. That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, speaking of which, we're all done here with this episode of Totally Use This Information with Nick and Roy. We will scour the internet, as we always do, and other sources to find Totally Use This Information just for you. And until then, we need you to do something for us. That's listen to every single show. <laughs> no, yes. But please do. But tell a friend. Tell everyone you know because you guys are making this show a success. And we thank you every week. And we try to bring you new stuff every week for you to enjoy. I'm Nick. And I'm Roy. Thanks for listening. Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy is a production of NickAndRoy.com. Visit nickandroy.com to access the full library of episodes or wherever you get your podcasts.